Okay, let me scroll back. Present. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today is going to be our part four of our SAS macro series to get you comfortable with using macros within your SAS programs. So our agenda for today, we're going to really focus on what we call this call simput routine. So we're going to discuss an overview of exactly what that is. And then we're going to use this call simput routine to help us create dummy variables with a data set. So call simput, what does this actually mean? So this routine assigns a value that you create within a data step to a macro variable that you can call on later. So real quick, I'm dropping down to this visual in the left-hand corner, and I see that I have a data step, so data underscore null, and I'm calling the call simput routine to create a macro variable called department no with the value of 1001. So once I run this data step, I'm able to write the value of that macro to my log using that percent put macro. And if you miss the percent put macro, look at part three of the video that can help you out there. But here I'm going to say department number equals that macro variable that I signed above. And when I look at the log, I see that the department number is equal to 1001, okay? So this is a way that we can create macros within a data step that takes on certain values. So some common use cases of utilizing this routine is that it helps us create dummy variables within a data set, and it also allows us to help label variables that need a specific format. So before we go into creating those dummy variables, let's just do a quick side note about the call simput X routine and what that main difference is. There are a couple of differences, but I'm just going to highlight the main one is that when you use the call simput X routine, it removes any trailing and leading blanks. OK, so in this case, I'm still want to create that macro variable department underscore no. And I still want to assign it a value of finance 1001 and notice that it has um, blanks in, or spaces in the middle. So now when I do my put statement and I look at the log, I see that I have no trailing or I mean no trailing or leading blanks, right? So the main difference between call simput and call simput X is that that call simput X is going to remove those trailing and leading spaces. All right, so now let's talk about the main use case of the call send put that we're going to talk about today. It's going to be creating dummy variables, right? And this is a great use case for multiple reasons. So for certain models, especially logistic regression models, which are classification models that help you predict the presence of an event, say, for instance, you want to predict cancer versus no cancer, or you want to predict a high earning store versus a low earning store, or you want to predict whether or not a water well is functioning or not functioning. All of these are questions that can be solved with a classification model, right? Based off of an event. So when you have dummy variables, which is pretty much a list of variables that are filled in with ones and zeros, one means that it has a certain value, zero means that it does not have a certain value, you are then able to take those dummy variables and create a model. And it's easier for us to interpret odds ratios for logistic regression, such as a female is six times more likely to have cancer compared to a male or store number four is three times less likely to make high sales compared to store number three, two, or one, okay? So these dummy variables can be very good in interpret interpreting these types of um, classification model coefficients. So the first step, and I've just did a quick data set for academic purposes, you can use any existing data set that you have that you want to create dummy variables for. I have factory sites and I input all of the site numbers. So I have sites number one, two, three, and four, right? And I want to dummy these out. So I want to have um, four additional variables, one called site one, 
one call site two, one call site three, one call site four. And with each one of these columns, I wanna put a one if it corresponds to that site or a zero if it does not correspond to that site. And we're gonna see the output in our final step. So the first thing is get the data set that you wanna work with, and then you want to get out the unique value. So in this case, I'm doing a proc sort and I'm sorting my data set that I created and I want to get out a data set called unique sites. And this no dupe key option means I don't want any duplicates, okay? Because notice in my data set, I have tons of duplicates because I have data, uh, more than one row of data for every factory. So see here, I have one, two, three, three rows of data for factory three, two rows of data for factory four and so forth. So I wanna get out the unique levels. After I get out the unique levels, I want to store the last value as a separate micro variable. So SAS knows how many unique levels you actually have. So in this case, I'm reading from that unique site set that we outputted in the previous step. So see here how we did out and we wrote it to a data set called unique underscore sites. I want to take that same data set now and I want to call the end equals last, which means gives me the last value in that data set. If it is the last value, now let's use that call simput routine. Store the last value as a macro variable called last site. And this put statement is just telling me to put that site variable into no more than three um, numeric digits, okay? So if I were to type this to the log, I would get the value of the last site, which in this case would be four. So that is my second step. Store that last value as its own macro variable. So once you do that, you are going to want to use a do loop to create an index that assigns the initial value of your macros to zero. OK, so the initial value of site one macro is going to be zero. The initial value of site two macro is going to be zero. Site three is going to be zero and so forth. So in this case, I'm also using what we call this double pipe. And that just means compress. And that's also going to remove those spaces. OK, so in this case, once again, I'm creating a data set that's not stored into my work library. There is no need to store it. It's not what I want. And I'm gonna do do I equals one up until the last site. So I equals one, two, three, all the way up to the last site, which is site four. So if you have 15 sites, you would do one all the way up to 15, which was be stored as your macro last site, whatever, um, how many values you have, you can store. In this case, I'm doing the call simput. I'm storing it as the macro called site. And I'm going to take out this left function. It's going to just give me everything on the left so I don't have any leading blanks. And I'm gonna take the value of I and I'm gonna initialize it as zero. So site one, zero. Site two, zero. Site three, zero, and so forth. So this is just initializing the values to be zero. The next step is that I'm gonna create a macro variable for every unique level, okay? So in this case, I'm creating a macro variable called site one that is going to have the site one. I'm going to create a macro variable that's called site three, site four, site five, et cetera, right? So this step is not just initializing the macro to be at zero, it's actually creating those individual columns, right? That I need in my final data set. So I need a column called site one, a column called site two, a column called site three, a column called site four, okay? So now since I have done my store my last value created macro variables for every site level that i have in my data set and created a column for every site level that i have in my data set i now can create the dummy variables using a macro program so in this case i'm calling the macro get site keep in mind that the percent macro statement will always end with a percent min statement this is our first video in the series. 
And now I have my do loop, right? So I want to do I equals one to my last site. If the site is equal to zero, then go ahead and end. Or if the site, okay, is equal to the site I, okay? So in this case, if the site is site one or site two or site three, then set that macro equal to one. Else, if it's not equal to each other, set it as zero. And this is gonna give me my ones and zeros that I need in my final data set, okay? So now once I create that program, I can call that program name within a data set. So in this case, I'm reading from the fact sites data set that I did in my proc sort originally, and I'm just overwriting it. And in this case, I'm calling that macro that I created in the previous slide. So the macro was called get site. I'm calling that same macro here for get site. Then I can do a proc print of that data set I just created. And here I see my data set. So notice my original site number is in the column site. And I have created four new columns that have ones or zero. So this is for site one. It has a one if it is equal to site number one. This is site two. It has a one if it is equal to site two and so forth. So this is how I can create the dummy variables. I know that was a lot of steps, so it helps if you go back, slow the video down, kind of digest the code, type it out on your own to build that muscle memory. But let's really quick look at it inside of SAS Studio as well, okay? So in this case, these are my steps here, and I added a little bit more pizzazz to it, right? So I want to start with the data set that I'm given. Maybe you've already had an existing data set that you have uploaded into SAS. Feel free to use that. I am just using a very simple dummy set here where I have information about the site. The, amper, the dollar sign means that it's a character variable, right? Um, I have information about the region as well as the sales. And then I can run this and get out my little data set, okay? Now... In this case, I am going to next do that proc sort that we just saw. So I'm going to take in the data set that I just created above. I'm going to put out the data set called unique sites. I don't want any duplicates. And then in this case, I can run this. And then I get unique sites as one, two, three, four. Okay. So in this case, now I need to store my last value. So I'm going to call the unique sites that I've created up here down here and i'm going to read from that unique site set and grab the last value which in this case is four and if it is the last value then i want to store it as a macro called last site okay and this is just telling me how to format it okay put it in a numeric format with three dot so in this case if i write this to the log I see that my last site is actually four, just like we expected, okay? Next, I'm going to initialize each value of my macro to be zero. So in this case, I have I to the last site. I want to create a macro called site, and I want to create a macro called site one, a macro called site two, a macro called site three, site four, et cetera. And the initial value of that is going to be zero. And now here, I'm also going to create columns in my data set. So I'm gonna call site. I am going to uh, get, grab the site number that it is, site one, two, three, four, and definitely create those as columns. I now I'm going to create that same macro program. Okay. So in this case, I want to, if the site is equal to the macro site one, site two, site three, then I want to put a one as that value. If it is not equal to that, I want to put a zero. So these are actually going to fill in ones and zeros. Okay. 
I then want to go ahead and create a data set from that macro. So this is get site and I'm calling that percent get site here. And then I want to print it out to see all my nice little dummy variables that's been created. And in this case, I see all of my nice little dummy variables. I have the region here and the sales here, just in case we wanted to run a logistic regression model on this down the road. But this is how you would create dummy variables using a nice little SAS macro. You can save this program, switch out the column names, but pretty much this will give you the dummies every time so you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel, right? Especially if you have a variable that has 15, 20, 25 different levels. It makes no sense to do a whole bunch of if then statements and things of that nature, okay? All right. So with that being said, thank you all for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I look forward to teaching you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.